Now today we're doing some work on the Subaru. Let's jump right into it. Now the map sensor is located on the throttle body. This is where the sensor lives. Now don't confuse this sensor with the mass airflow sensor that's directly after the air filter. Now before you run out, spend $200, a factory Denso sensor is $200. So let's pinpoint and verify where the problem is. Now two ways to test the sensor. We can use a scan tool or we can do something that's a little bit old fashioned but it does work. So let's first start by using a scan tool. Now this is one of the most inexpensive scan tools that I've come across that's able to read the map sensor. As always, I will link all of the tools in the description box below. If this is all new to you, essentially you have a connector and all that you do is simply plug in the connector to the vehicle's computer. And once again, if you've never done this before, that connector is exactly the same no matter what type of vehicle you have. The federal law is from 1997 onwards, you have that same connector. So let's start the vehicle. As you can see, the check engine light is on along with the cruise control flashing. Stability control is off. Don't worry about that. It's just there to scare you. So let's jump over to the scan tool, diagnose. And what you're looking for is data stream. Let's select the item. We are looking for the map sensor. And right here we have the intake manifold absolute pressure. So that's what we want. And let's take a reading. Now, right now we're at 30 to 32 kilopascals. That is an excellent reading. That is a normal reading. This is what you want to see. Now trouble code 107, you'll see that the kilopascal reading is 13 or below and trouble code 108 is 119 kilopascals or above. Now this does not necessarily mean the sensor is bad. Let me show you. This map sensor is working 100%. Off camera, I disconnected the harness connector from the sensor. Two reasons for that. Number one is to show you the dashboard, what it looks like with the check engine light on. But the second reason is with this harness connector disconnected, I'm still receiving a trouble code for P108. So this sensor is in perfect shape, but you may have a wiring issue. Let me show you how you can diagnose that. Now this is a digital multimeter. Once again, I will list this in the description box below. This runs for like 25 bucks. And now we can test a number of things right here at home. So every multimeter, they have two leads, a black lead and a red lead. So let's plug in the leads, black. Now black in our case will be ground. That's any good metal point on the vehicle and our red lead. Okay, let's turn on the ignition key to the start position. Don't start the vehicle, okay? Now on the meter, we're choosing the volts DC setting, okay? And I'm also using a probe kit. You can purchase a whole kit for like eight bucks. If you don't have the kit, you don't want to buy it, you can use a paper clip. Just be really, really careful, be gentle. Now on the harness connector, you'll find in this case, three terminals. And this will lead into the old fashioned way of testing this sensor. So I need to find where the power source is. So taking the probe, the ignition switch or the ignition key is on, black is going to ground. I'm taking my red, let's try this guy right in the middle. Now this is a millivolt reading. Let me show you. You see a little MV, okay? Don't let that trick you. That doesn't mean that we have power coming here. We're looking for five volts, okay? So that MV has to go completely away and we need just to find V. And there we go, five volts. Let me show you once more. Okay, so this is our power wire and we know that we have no issues, no issues regarding the wiring. Now this is sort of cool and it ties into the map sensor, but a few years ago I had a Honda S2000 
went through the steps showing on how to get that vehicle up and running, worthy for the road, very cool, very fun car. Now, chances are, if you're within that community, you know the issues, or the issue, I should say, that the S2000 had with the map sensor. In fact, Honda issued a service bulletin, and the fix at the Honda dealership, if I remember correctly, it was using two zip ties, okay? And they had a special mount where they just essentially triple check that the harness connector and the map sensor is plugged in securely and they zip tied the two together. Whenever you do any work on these sensors, you always want to hear a clicking noise, okay? So maybe a little hard to pick up on camera. Super, super soft here on the Subaru. Some other vehicles are louder, but just listen. You hear that? So you want to hear that clicking noise. Now the last thing I want to show is how to test this the old fashioned way. Now the reason why I show these old fashioned way of doing things in this video and other videos in the past is because not everyone has a scan tool, not everyone wants to invest in one, and there are ways to check things. So again, probe kit. I have shown this before using paper clips, but trust me, this is a much better and safer option. Now if you remember, we found the power wire just earlier. So we know which wire is providing power to the sensor. So the other two wires are signal and ground. Now the ground wire I know is the middle wire and I'll show you how. Once again, multimeter. I'm looking for continuity. That's the Wi-Fi hotspot looking symbol on the multimeter. And continuity simply means two points make a connection and you'll hear an audible alert. Okay. Once again, the ignition key is on. Black wire is going to ground. I know this is my power wire. So either this or this guy is ground, the middle or the left here. So if I try the guy on the left, I hear nothing. Middle. That's my ground. A little bit of bad connection at the black wire, but nonetheless, that is our ground wire. So the terminal here on the right is our power, middle is ground, and this is our signal wire, okay? Now this is why it comes into play. Let's plug this back in. And once again, I'm using a probe adapter. Now you can use a paper clip, two paper clips, and I'll show you that in a moment if you just you're in a rush and you don't want to purchase this kit but for eight bucks you get all of these adapters straight 45 degrees and 90 degrees this is really important because in this case we're placing one of the probes into the signal wire and the other is going into the ground wire now you don't want these two to touch because it will stall the car but it can also damage the vehicle's computer, okay? Now, what you're going to do is start the vehicle. Now, once you start the vehicle, you should see a voltage reading, but if you have trouble code 107, you should see less than half a volt, and 108 trouble code is above 4.4 volts. So this is another way you can certainly check everything and pinpoint if you have a problem with the sensor, or maybe you just have a simple wiring harness issue. And lastly, if you've checked everything, the sensor just is uh, no longer working and it needs to be replaced, you can easily strip out these fasteners. So this is something you can use. Now this is something airline maintenance workers use. A fluid that you find metal flakes, okay? Metal flakes in the medium. And that's because it provides more grip onto the fastener. In a case like this, the vehicle is 13 years old, 175,000 miles. I don't want these to strip. So this is a big plus. And then I'm pressing down very hard, okay? Two hands, pressing down and turning, okay? Very, very slowly. I don't want that to strip. So there you go. You see how tough that is? One more time over here, down hard. There we go. Okay, so as you can see, not very hard to test and replace. And when you install the new sensor, do not over tighten it because you don't want 
the body to crack. Erase the code with your scan tool and you're all done. So I sincerely hope this helps a number of you out there. That's really why I do these videos, just to show that you can tackle a lot of these problems and do it at home and save a bundle of money. In fact, it's something I will talk about soon on how you can save just thousands of dollars over the long term, just doing your own work and maintenance and you know keep your car up and running. And as always, thank you for watching.